All right, when cooking vegetables, I don't know. I just like to keep it easy, as I probably mentioned before, but Costco. Costco is the cheapest place to buy produce I find. So all I do is buy a bag of beans, put them all out. We do about half a bag per container, per microwave container. So about half a bag of beans in the container like so. Just lay it all out. They're already pre-washed and everything. Again, I like keep it easy. Fill the container, I don't know, a third full of water. Put the lid on. Important to note, it's a glass container. Um, just more durable that way too. Throw the microwave. Green beans, about four and a half minutes. Once it's done, I will take it out. I close the lid so that it has a little vent on there. Close the lid, let it sit for another minute or two to soften up a bit more. Then I drain the water out, let it sit and cool down, chop it up uh, into like small pieces. And there's my green bean allotment for uh, probably about three, four days. Uh, a bag of green beans from Costco lasts about a week for me. And then same thing with the broccoli. So the broccoli, I just lay out in another container. It's all about being efficient. So while that one's cooking behind me, get on to the next one, next vegetable, lay it all out in its own glass container. Once again, fill it about a third full of water at the bottom. Put the lid on, open the vent. And that's ready to go. And this is probably, yeah, three, maybe, maybe two, two to three days worth of broccoli. So I usually buy two bags from Costco for my week's uh, amount of broccoli that I eat. So that just sits on deck, ready for the other one. All right, so it's all about efficiency. So while my beans are cooking in the microwave, my broccoli's on deck, then I take this time to just slice an avocado in half put it in two different containers because avocado is currently in my diet. And then by the time the broccoli is done, then I have my avocado packed for the next day. So it's all about multitasking. Once you find a system that works for you, this becomes so much easier. Um, and then you know, on a different day, I might have maybe yeah, I'm cooking in the background or my rice cooker uh, turned on and just cooking rice in the background. Uh, I might have you know chicken breast in the oven if I'm short on chicken breast. Um, it's just finding out ways to limit the amount of time I spent actively working and cooking and stirring something and finding cooking methods that make the most sense to kind of get started and set aside and check on it, setting the various alarms on maybe the stove or on my, uh, on my cell phone. But, uh, just as much as you can sit back and let the food cook, you're going to save so much time. So my egg scramble quiche kind of meal, it's probably my most labor intensive meal that I make. Um, what I used to do is I used to pan fry, uh, at the time it was three, no, four whole eggs. Uh, no, three whole eggs, three whole eggs, 200, uh, uh, 200 grams of egg whites and then 50 grams of spinach. And I would pan fry it each time in a tablespoon of coconut oil. Now, I found that only making one serving at a time or one meal at a time uh, and having to watch the eggs in the fry pan closely was just a little bit too labor intensive. So as usual, I wanna be as efficient as possible. So what I decided to do was start baking it. So I just times the recipe by four uh, and then bought a baking sheet or like a cake pan and I use that as um, the method that I use to make my eggs. So yeah, it's a little more labor intensive in the sense where I have to devote more time into kind of setting it up. So, uh, but the trade-off is that it's a lot more convenient. Once it's all in the pan and in the oven, I can just kind of set it aside and forget about it. Uh, and like with other cooking, like, you know, if that, if the eggs are in the oven cooking at the time, that frees up my hands to either do dishes or pack meals or uh, prep something else or attend to my kids if they need something or, or just sit down and relax while it's in the oven. So 
uh, that's really important. So basically what I do is I, uh, since I times it by four, I take the four tablespoons of coconut oil and I put it all in the pan. I smear it all around like I'm greasing a cake pan. And, um, and then once that's done, then I scramble the 12 whole eggs and I pour it all in the pan. Uh, once that's in there, then I start to chop up the spinach. So approximately 200 grams of spinach takes a little while, but I chop it up. I don't like to have big chunks of spinach in the egg. Uh, so I uh, take scissors and I just chop it all up. Um, and then I put that all in the pan uh, so that it's kind of half mixed. Then I pour the 800 grams of egg whites on top, kind of do a light mix. So it's kind of mixed throughout. Uh, and then what I do is I top the um, the eggs, the egg mixture uh, with the spinach. I top that with a, a copious amount of Montreal steak spice, which I put on everything. Uh, Montreal steak spice and some extra sea salt on top. Chuck that in the oven and I bake that at 350 for maybe 30 minutes. And once it cools down, once I take it out and it cools down, chop it up into four sections. There's my four egg meals for the day. So again, easy, simple, maybe eight minutes of mixing eggs, greasing the pan, chopping spinach and chuffing it in the oven, and then I can forget about it and it's done. So again, all about efficiency. So when it comes to cooking meat, it's not really fancy, I just keep it simple. Like I said, I like to set up as many things to cook in the background that you know requires as little attention as possible for me so I can multitask, do other things, cook something else, food prep, sit down and eat while it's cooking. So basically for me, all I do is I take a Costco pack of ground beef, get the biggest one I can, of course. Um, <laughs> I have a, a really large fry can uh, that I have on the element behind me here on the stove. And basically all I do is open the pack, chuck all the meat in there, Even it out a little bit, kind of squish it around the pan. Put the lid on. Let it cook. It's basically all I do. Um, you know, I let it cook for a bit. After it starts to brown, as all the juices and the fat and the water is kind of coming out of it. Put the lid on, tilt it over the sink to drain. Put it back, cook, maybe drain one more time. And I have over a week's worth of beef already cooked. So. Again, it's all about multitasking, right? While my beef's cooking, all I do to cook my chicken is I had the oven preheating. I have a large baking sheet, baking pan, a little more in depth, right? Rather than the shallow one. And I have a big pack of Costco chicken breasts. I just lay that on the pan, chuck it in the oven. Uh, I cook it about 400, maybe after about 20, 25 minutes, flip them all, put them in for another 15, 20 minutes and there's a week's worth of chicken breast cooked. So no frills, no excitement. Uh, I rely on uh, Montreal steak spice or seasoning spices or maybe a little bit of teriyaki sauce or sugar-free sauces for the flavor. I don't get too crazy with the cooking because I'm cooking all the time. Uh, but I find that keeping it as simple as I can, keeping it low maintenance, that's why I never get sick of food prep and it's not really part of my day I'm not looking forward to because it's just keep it easy and simple. So that's it. Sorry, no exciting culinary art tips and Gordon Ramsay style stuff, but uh, yeah, just the basics and you stick to the basics. You can keep to it long term and sticking to the basics over the long term will equal results. So. Okay, after all that food is cooked, um, you don't want any of it to go to waste. I hate wasted food and it costs a lot of money to buy the, pro uh, the proper food that you want to eat and nourish yourself with. So I have like a little easy storage system that makes sense to me. I just like, like I said before, like I said, it lots. I like to keep it easy, keep it simple, low maintenance. So most of the food that I cook, I store in like Pyrex or glass containers. Um, and uh, store in the fridge for vegetables like beans and uh, broccoli that I steam. I don't really make enough of it for it to go bad. I cook maybe three, four days worth. That's fine in the fridge. Uh, chicken, I usually have about three, four days worth in the fridge. Anything extra, 
my Costco pack I make, I store in the freezer uh, in pre-weighed servings. Uh, and then same with the ground beef. If ground beef, I leave out enough for, I think, four days. And then once I run out of the fresh stuff that I kept in the fridge for four days, then I pull out the individually stored pre-weighed portion um, amounts of my ground beef in the freezer. So uh, eggs, I only make about enough for four days. So once the four days is up, then I make another batch of my egg spinach scramble thing. Uh, avocados, once they're ripe, I store in the fridge. I just chop up two days at a time. So it's just uh, as I need more, uh, as I'm like packing my food the night before, as I find out I need more of something for the next day, um, then I just have put on put that on my to-do list to cook. So rice is easy, just set the rice cooker. Yeah, it's easy, chop it up, boil it for like half an hour, whatever it is, and water, drain it, mash it, it's done. Um, you saw how I cook my ground beef, how, my uh, how I cook my chicken, how I see my veggies. Everything is really simple. Uh, for storage, so I keep it in the freezer here. I have my sandwich containers that I bought from the dollar store, um, 150 grams of ground beef in each of these, and to make sure it doesn't dry out too much, I put it in a Ziploc bag. So I have two, four, six, eight. I have 10 of these individual portions of ground beef in the freezer, plus the three, four days worth in the fridge right now. I may also have some uh, chicken in there as well. I don't know off the top of my head if I have any in there. That's pretty much how I do my freezer storage. Uh, I have my egg whites in there. So I buy three or four um, packages of egg white curtains from Costco. Uh, I store about four in the fridge at, the at a time, and I store the rest in the freezer. Uh, other stuff, it's kids' food, you know, Costco muffins and stuff. I don't need that stuff. So that's all the stuff in my freezer. Uh, the fresh stuff I keep in my fridge, again, I keep it pretty simple. Um, as you can see down here, I have all my glass containers that I store my beef, uh, my beans, my broccoli, stuff like that, uh, my egg, my egg scramble. Uh, down below, I have a uh, couple more glass containers. I got my almonds I keep in the fridge. I got my container of peanut butter, my kefir. Uh, I have a few containers of kefir, so that's what I mix my protein shakes with. And then my eggs. So the day before, when I need to pack my meals for the next day, uh, what I do is I just take out all the containers that I need, put it on the counter, bring on my three to four containers, just weigh it out. So once everything is cooked, like I said, I like to keep it very simple. Once everything is cooked, I just take out the containers that I need. I weigh it out on, in my Tupperware containers for the next day that I'm gonna bring to work with me. Once it's all cooked, the packaging part, I don't know, it takes like five minutes. So it's all about efficiency. Just keep it easy, keep it low stress. That's how I like to keep it rather than having a whole day booked off, like a Sunday to like mass cook and pack food and have a whole storage system. I just cook as I need store it appropriately and divvy it out as I need. So, easy. All right, so we're here for poll day. It's a poll A day, so it's hard and heavy. Um, we're doing rack deads, most amount of weight possible, really isolate the back muscles. Uh, we utilize one cable exercise, then we do cable pull downs, and then from then on, it's uh, machines. Similar principle to the push A day where we use a lot of Smith machine. We're gonna use a lot of plate loaded machines. So again, we can just kind of close our eyes, grit our teeth, pound the muscles in the submission. So, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so it'll be good. More rest pausing today uh, to finish the A rotation, and then uh, legs and biceps will finish off the A, and then we'll go to B, which is kind of similar format, but slightly different selection of exercises. So. I'm still sore from the push workout we did the other day. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Same laughs> so uh, we'll see how today goes. It's our last warm up set before going into our max set. So, again, for these warm ups, we want to save energy for the top set, but do enough repetitions so where we can feel the weight and get mentally prepared for it.
here we go. Top set, we don't rest pauses just for safety. We do a back off set after this. Aiming for about six to eight repetitions. Come on. Five. Six. Come on, up. Eight. Okay, so this is back off set. We do just for safety reasons one top set. We don't rest hard this at all. So one top set, we do a back off set aiming for about eight to ten reps. Just to make sure that I take profit take Putting profit. pack in the air, put a little bit of lemon all in my green tea, my green tea. I'm living no limit, they know what it is right when they see me, they see me. You ain't hit my phone up, don't come to my house, to my house. Quarter ounce of cookies, got me one with my couch, with my couch. Made my own lane, they can't come for my route You catch me running up them digits, not running my mouth And now they see me up doing everything I plan to be no new n around here, this just my family. my family. Tryna spread love, my life ain't about no vanity. No vanity. Gotta cut ties if it ain't good for my sanity. My ain't gotta speak, they know what's really poppin'. I'm shiny suit man, making them bands, they know I'm Diddy Bobbin'. Slap 10 on the tank, I had to stop and get them top papers. Okay. 
going heavy, heavy is big too. The normal heart breaks down is eight repetitions for the first part of the rest pause, then four, and usually skip down to the two or three. So if I go eight, four, three, then I don't hit my 15. So I did eight and four. So my mindset going into this, I could do my 15 breaths, just try to fight for those three reps as hard as I can. I'm about to book a trip to Aussie, tell a get off me. Jet black and Richard in your coffee, got me feeling saucy. Ain't talking power moves, you lost me. My time be costly. I'm sliding around my side like hockey. She gon' I'm dropping ashes on my slippers, kung fu in my kickers. Pulling in that cut, I'm sharp as clippers. Jacket with them zippers, strip her out, her knickers lie. You ain't hit my phone up, don't come to my house. Quarter ounce of cookies got me one with my couch. So I earned increased weight next, uh, next workout. It's not bad, it's brand new weight today too, so it felt good. Here we go, rest pause set. Six reps, 15 breaths. So remember, we're trying to fall between 10 and 15. If he earns the 15, then he goes up. Anything below that, you carry over the same weight the next workout and try to beat your reps. Drive. Come on. Three. Now, it depends on how you want to count. That could be three and a half or four. That's not good enough. Three and a half. Okay, we're at nine and a half. <laughs> so, even if he gets another half repetition, that breaks a 10 threshold. At least a half. Come on. Drive. Good set. It ain't no thing to do my thing. It's what I did the best. I cop that crib and bought two chains and then I hid the rest. And it's okay to do your thing, but just don't do the most. I put my friends in that old Benz and took that to the coast. It ain't no thing to do my thing, it's what I do the best. I fill my mattress, pay my taxes, then I blew the rest. And it's okay to do your thing, but just don't do the least. I quit my boss and cook that sauce and fed that to the street. Uh, sliding in here like a wet flow, already fried from the get go. Alligators look like echo, everything I do, they echo. Big fast, my bank on big man, my drip too wet, that spit can. Yo, Swap me like Q-tips, hold that shit there like dip can No rehearse, need no reverb, hold your lip, don't say three words Quick trip to get that lick lick, brought tree fur if you prefer Quick ride, no time, I'm in there, she clockwise, real good skincare No tip top for that caca, they know that love don't live there I can't roll dice on your plan, Red Rover, I don't hold hands Get fortune from my foresight, investment brought me four bands Don't roll rage, I get roll head, we'll wheel all by your forehead them city john be like he lit Them country girls be like go ahead If I ain't that man then I gotta be more than human How you mean? Funny how the people back then Always hating on a kid Always talking about how you clean Put a little gas in the block And I don't pass broke ass Nigga just please be cool But I can't blame ya I won't shame ya Shit I probably wanna be me too It yeah. ain't no thing to do my thing It's what I did the best yes. I cop that crib and bought two chains And then I hid the rest And it's okay to do your thing But just don't do the most I put my friends in that old Benz and took that to the coast. It ain't no thing to do my thing, it's what I do the best. I fill my mattress, pay my taxes, then I blew the rest. And it's okay to do your thing, but just don't do the least. 
I quit my boss and cooked that sauce and fed that to the street. It's no thing, no sweat, I ain't really worried about it too much. Slight work, light work, not work, I ain't really do much. Get it in, ship it out, pivot route back, corner end zone. Hit up with a best friend, I don't really know about a friend zone. Real time, real talk, fake niggas can't really match that. Put it in the insurance, Uncle Sam can't really tax that. Get the game, learn the game, play the game, sell the game, all that. Never let them tell you what you can't do, gotta change all Myself, they be feeling me too, baby don't fight the feeling I been so high that I'm tryna scale the roof, I'm tryna bite the ceiling They be on bullshit like a zoo fly, I be too fly to participate I need everything for the everything, if I fuck with you get a different rate Got me fucked up, got me typoed, if you're thinking this shit glucose Winning in it ain't too close, I be flying out to a new coast And I'm acting like it ain't a big deal, really so it ain't a big deal Four freaks, I'm a fifth wheel, I was born winning, I'm the shit still no and it's okay to do your thing, but just don't do the most. I put my friends in that old Benz and took that to the coast. It ain't no thing to do my thing, it's what I do the best. I feel my mattress, pay my taxes, then I blew the rest. And it's okay to do your thing, but just don't do the least. I quit my boss and cook that sauce and fed that to the street. Come on, Ivan. Two. Three. Four. You thought about it. <laughs> nice deep breaths. Eight and four. So the mindset mentality going into this last rest pause set is to try to get at least three. But you also don't want to cheat it to try to get that three. Fifteen clean controlled reps is that magic number to earn that progression. All right. Up. You got it. Up. Come on. Up. Okay. One. Up. Drive. Uh. One more. Up. Nice. Oh, baby. Good. Fifteen. Oh, yeah. Oh, I feel good. Oh. All right, so for this, we're just doing one warm up. We're pretty much warm from the previous exercises. We did rack deads, we did pull downs, we did a close grip oh. machine row. So now we're just changing the grip and the posture a bit to get a different aspect of the back. So there's no need to go crazy on the warm ups and burn through energy that we could use for the top sets. So just one set, maybe 50, 60 pounds under our working weight, handful of reps to feel it, and get ready for that top set. So last workout, I got my 15 with this weight, but I kind of cheated a little bit to get my 15, so I want to make sure this is a nice, clean 15, so that's my challenge for this one.
four. Just three more hit by 15. Feels harder today, but it's because I have to keep in mind that I increased my weight for the previous two exercises. Though. Those were new weights today, so. Makes today a little bit harder. Last. Here we go, top set. Overhand grip. Last exercise, we did a narrow grip. We sat upright a little bit more to get the lower lat. For this one, we're taking an overhand grip to get a little bit more upper back thickness. Come on. Or. Six. And then. Hey, good hard body. Deep breaths, 15 breaths, one more time. So that's 12 and a half. Yeah, so for now. That's half, man. Waiting for every bit we can get. Two half is like one. That's true. Yeah. As Wiseman says, that's where the gains are made. You got him. Last one.
Okay, so after my heaviest set, Wiseman pointed out something to me. <laughs> is that apparently I've been doing it all wrong. You're not supposed to bop your head on the machine. Make Maybe that. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm not making the gains I'm supposed to. So we're good for our push A workouts. So I'm usually doing all the talking. So I'm about wise and talk. How was it? Oh, it was great. <laughs> we're on the spot now, man. <laughs> yeah, no, we got us fantastic. And uh, we did uh, uh, everything according to our expectations. And exceeded actually quite a few uh, exercises. We did like way more than we we're expecting. Well, way more than I was expecting to do. And uh, yeah, it felt great. And uh, very successful workouts. And uh, uh, what else? Moved yeah. a lot of poundage. Yeah, more, more, a lot of poundage and we killed it. <laughs> and I'm uh, looking forward to our next uh, big workout. There you go. Uh, I don't know when. I just, uh, he just, he just have to tell me when, and you know, I just, uh, just show up, right? That's what's awesome. Like as I mentioned before on social media, like it's uh, Susan Wiseman heard I was competing. He uh, volunteered and said that he'd come up whenever he is, he's able to. So so far he's been coming up more often than I expected, which is great. At least once a week. But this has been back to back days, so it's been really. Oh yeah. Great. Helps yeah. push me, keeps the intensity high. I'm um, beating numbers a little bit easier. It's just nice to have that support. So. Um, yeah, it's been really good. So we'll see. We'll see what the next workout is. We got it. Okay. Good job. Thank yeah. you. All right. All right. First question. How do I find the time to go to the gym as a parent and a working adult? Um, it's all about priorities. I know people say that all the time, but what does that really mean? Whatever you value the most, you'll always make time for or make sure that it gets done, right? So for me now, I make sure that most of my workout days fall on days that I don't have my kids. I give my kids approximately half time. And on the days that I do have them, so say for instance, I'm picking them up after school on a weekday, I'll just make sure to wake up early that morning and get my workout done before work. So in that way, I don't miss up that workout day. But usually, since I only train three out of five days, usually I can make it work or last minute swap a workout day with a rest day so that uh, I can still continue to train with little variances to the schedule and it doesn't interrupt my time with the kids. And if we're talking cardio, if it's a rest day and I need to get cardio in, it's not too difficult to do. So, for instance, I used to live in a basement suite, and I would just do my cardio outside on the steps. I had a long flight of steps that went from ground level to my basement suite level. And I just leave the kids inside, let them know I'm outside doing cardio, and that's how I got that done. And now I live in an apartment, so what I do now is I basically, basically do the same thing. <laughs> is I'm sure my neighbors aren't fans of it, but... I will actually tell the kids to just outside the door and I'll do the stairs in the apartment and do flights of stairs for 20 minutes and the kids know where to find me. So safety wise, I'm right outside the door and down the staircase. So cardio is pretty easy. Really at the end of the day, I guess I could do something in the apartment as well. If I had a stationary bike, I used to have a commercial stepper in the house. Um, but uh, there's ways. There's ways you can get it done. Just got to get creative. I'm also really fortunate to have the help of my mom who, uh, when she comes over every other weekend, she spends time with the kids and watches them while I duck off for me time and get my gym workout done. So that helps as well. So if you have family that live close by that want to help and support you or spend time with your kids, that's always a plus too. And then thinking back to when I was married with the, uh, with the mother of my kids, 
you know, my advice would be you just have to make sure you're both on the same page. So we both regularly worked out. We both had our own personal fitness goals. Mine was more bodybuilding and compete every once every few years. And she just wanted, wanted to stay generally healthy. So what we would do is we just changed our responsibilities and our schedule where I would wake up at five in the morning, go get my workout done first thing in the morning and time it so that I was home in time to help get the kids awake and fed and then drop them off at daycare and we all go to work. And then after work, I will go pick up the kids from daycare, bring them back home, play with them, entertain them because they, they were at that age, prepare dinner, and right after work, my ex-wife would go straight to the gym and that was her gym time was after work. Uh, so we both got our workouts done. We both got our parental duty stuff done. Um, it just, we had to be on the same page and support each other in that sense. So again, it's, uh, it's all a matter of priority. If you want to make it done and if you're with someone or live with someone, if you both want to get it done, or you support your significant other in what they want to get done, it's definitely doable. I mean, before PVR, why even now during PVR days or Netflix, if you want to watch a show for an hour or a movie two hours every night, you know, people find a way to get that done. Swap that out for an hour, hour and a half workout. It's just as doable. Just depends, do you really want it? Next question was, how do I continue to afford to eat healthy, especially when during these days, the cost of everything has gone quite a bit up? Um, I think it's pretty easy to eat well on a budget, considering how, for instance, one of my healthy meals easily costs a quarter to a third of the cost of a fast food meal. And McDonald's nowadays is like, what? 11, 12, $13 for a meal? I, I can easily do a healthy meal, half of that. Um, and then people's rebuttal is usually, well, it takes a lot of time to cook and I don't always have time to cook. Well, like I showed earlier in the episode, if you have a good cooking and storage system down pat, it's pretty easy to find the time to cook. It's uh, pretty low maintenance. You can find very low maintenance ways to do it. So uh, it's definitely doable. You just have to know where to shop and what kind of food you want to eat. So for me, for instance, my protein sources are chicken, beef, and eggs. Um, that's lower cost compared to salmon. I don't eat salmon because of the cost. But what I do is what makes salmon healthy is the uh, omega fatty acids. Uh, so how I get those is I buy salmon oil capsules. Sure, you can make the argument it's not as good or as healthy as the source, but the fact is I still get them. Well, I get my protein from other sources. I get my fats from other sources. And the salmon oil capsules fulfill that void of the omega fatty acids. Uh, that's just a seafood example. Uh, beef, for instance. I can't remember the last time I bought steaks. Um, sure if it's like a date night or a special occasion, but 99% of the time I'm buying ground beef because at the end of the day, beef is beef. Other than the protein and fat content, the amino acid profiles are pretty much the same. So I eat nothing but ground beef as my beef source. Um, I can drain it. I can strain it. I can rinse it to get the fat down low. Uh, but it's, uh, most cost effective compared to a steak. Sure, it tastes different, but that's really the only difference. So can I justify spending two to three times the amount of money on a steak because it tastes better? If at the end of the day, I'm eating for fuel and for muscle growth and they both provide me the same protein and, and amino acids, can't justify it. Uh, and eggs, I just find out where to shop. Eggs, I buy them all from Costco. I buy the liquid egg whites, so I don't use all whole eggs. I do use some whole eggs to get some yolks, but I top it off with cartons of egg whites because it's a much cheaper way to increase my egg intake. And for carbohydrates, white rice is 
super cheap for serving. So I buy big bags of white rice from Costco, um, potatoes, yams, really cheap. I used to buy them from farmer's markets, but you can buy them from a uh, grocery store or Costco as well. Uh, and buy a huge quantity of carbohydrates for a pretty cheap cost. So I don't, I've never really bought into that uh, argument of it costs a lot to eat healthy. I've never found that it does. It's pretty easy. Vegetables are cheap too, especially if you buy big bags of vegetables. Farmer's markets, great, but if not, I buy, I buy mine from Costco, like I mentioned, pre-washed, ready to cook, and they're ready fast and they're not that expensive. So you can definitely eat healthy on a budget. You might have to make little, like, you know, little sacrifices or pick what you want to spend your money on. Um, but it can be done. And in terms of getting healthy fats, and sure, there's certain fats that are really expensive, like avocado can be pretty pricey. But a big tub of coconut oil from Costco is pretty cheap. Uh, olive oil is fairly cheap. Uh, almonds, walnuts, you can buy from a bulk section and still get some healthy fats for a relatively low cost. So fats are definitely doable as well. Last question is, how do I always find the motivation to go to the gym or get my workouts in? I don't. You're not always going to have motivation or the energy to go. For me personally, I just know that I would regret not going more. I know that I need to stay motivated to accomplish my goal. Uh, and it's worth it in the end. And... It's, I've never regretted a workout that I've kind of made myself go complete. But the trade-off for that is you got to make sure you make that smart decision of when to work out and when not to. If you're sick, that's a different story. But if it's just an energy level thing, a motivation thing, no, you're not always going to have the energy or motivation. But that kind of is a sign that maybe, you know... You don't have your priorities in check or you truly want to get that goal that you've set out to accomplish so for me if it's a competition i got a competition date in mind you can't shake me it's set i'm doing it um because i know that when i get there and i don't think i did my best i'm gonna really regret the handful of workouts that i skipped out on where i could have easily gone but you definitely do have to listen to your body in a sense. So if I'm really fatigued or if I'm tired or if I didn't get a lot of sleep, yes, I do scale the intensity back a bit. Um, I might not use as much pre-workout because it's false energy and runs me deeper into the negative. So I will kind of taper back the intensity or what I'm training that day. But I still get that training session done to still make it productive. But you got to be smart about it, for sure. All right, if you have any other questions, then definitely... Comment down below in the comment section of this video on YouTube or send me a DM through Instagram or if you got me on Facebook and I'll uh, answer them as we go. Make sure to like the video, share the video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your support. What they get when they doubt you, call your names and then they clown you. People like tough and then tuck the tails and then hop the shells when they're around you. <laughs> Your bark is way bigger than your bite. I'm the only beast in this cage. Oh, natural. <laughs>